yin yang. High pointed ears that stick out from the head with reduced lobes <coughs> are, are the yang is the low long ears that lie flat against the head with full lobes. Uh, so you have to really assess who you are in order to properly maintain your vehicle, which is your body. That's right. And that's what this book is all about. Did you go for self-assessment? Yes, I did. I was found to be 63% pita, 27% kappa, and 11% vata. The yin-yang test, I was found to be 82% yang. Francis, did you go for self-assessment? Yes, the test shows that my metabolism is either fast or slow, and I'm in perfect balance. Regarding personality assessment, I am more type B personality than type A or C personality, and I am pretty much balanced. I was born on July 15th, and my horoscope sign is Cancer. A Scorpio. Are you a Scorpion? Would, that, would you be yeah. a Scorpion? Yeah. Watch out for my tail. We are all unique. The book, Control for Life Extension, a personalized holistic approach, helps you understand your unique body and personality type and do everything right for your type. Eight Western and five Oriental diagnostic systems are used for self-assessment, focusing on heredity, lifestyle, blood type, metabolic type, somatotype, personality type, instincts, temperaments, Ayurvedic dasha type, yin-yang type, five elements type, chakra profile, and your personal horoscope. Self-assessment is done through charts. You highlight with a marker entries appropriate for you, count them, then put the result of the assessment on a graph. After you have gone through all 13 systems, you will have your unique multifaceted profile. Food choices for your type are at the end of the book. Other features of lifestyle suitable for your type are dispersed throughout the book. Thou shalt know thyself. Do self-assessment. Practice the lifestyle appropriate for your unique type. Don't you want some honey, honey? The sweet honey from the bee. So how much uh, deer meat do you eat every day? Oh, probably two pounds. For how long? Oh God, my whole life. Do you feel you are healthy and you, you have no problems? I guess I'm fairly healthy for my age. Everyone is unique. Excessive protein consumption is linked to the development of different kinds of cancer. I have analyzed the statistical data on protein consumption and death rate from cancer for 87 countries. This graph shows the relationship between daily protein intake and death rate from cancer. At the top of the graph are developed European countries such as Denmark, Germany, England, Italy, Belgium and France with their protein consumption 100 grams a day or even more. The United States is in that group too. Countries with the low protein consumption, those in South America and Southeast Asia, are at the bottom of this graph and they enjoy a low death rate from cancer. Animal-based protein increases insulin resistance, it really increases, you know, obviously the tendency to heart disease, and also, very specifically, cancer rates are significantly higher. Well, for example, beef. I would eat just a few slices of beef, very little, very, very little. It's never very heavy at all. And I eat very little yes. meat, some. Avoid excessive protein consumption, especially animal proteins. We need much less protein to stay healthy and fit than most nutrition authorities recommend. Protein is a double-edged sword. My finding is in sync with Dr. Colin Campbell's book, The China Study, 
and Dr. Neil Nedley's book, Proof Positive. Oils um, and margarines and also uh, animal fats into trans fatty acids for the oils and heterocyclic amines for animal fats and acrylamides into uh, uh, from superheated carbohydrates like toast and fried potatoes, this sort of thing. And these are oxidized forms or stale forms of these oils and fats. Uh, they actually increase your risk of cancer, heart disease, plugged arteries, uh, cataracts, uh, lupus, liver disease, uh, brain disease of all kinds. So all of the things we do that are bad do not directly kill you. Hamburgers do not directly kill you. Hamburgers cause massive amounts of free radicals. Your problem with food is not because you're dumb and you think that those things are good for you. It's you're addicted so you don't know how to stop them. That's the real issue. Now once you get that, you say, oh wait a minute, even if I want to have that, even if I want to eat that, I can't do it because it's detrimental for me. Consumption, dead food consumption, a lifetime of dead food consumption, body ailment newly brought in relentlessly, never ever been having a rest on any of that, and um, that acidifying the body. So I want you to stop eating dead food. A little one is 21.50 and then it goes on up to an eight. Only, uh, only cooked uh, vegetable, not good. So fresh, very... raw vegetable, very good. Fresh and <laughs> raw. <laughs> it's addictive. I wouldn't say that a steamed broccoli is addictive. I mean, that would be a little going overboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Also, what it is. Um, Hippocrates Health Institute, you probably know about them, Dr. Enric Moore established it. And they cure incurable cancers in West Palm Beach now with the complete raw wheatgrass juice, other juice, uh, living foods like uh, based on sprouts. Well, now, nothing's 100% Valeri. You know, as a detoxifying diet, I don't see any problem with that. As a lifelong diet, I do. I believe that would work just as well to have one or two meals a day of all raw fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And the other meal or two, depending upon one's preference, macrobiotic, you know, with uh, baked, broiled, whatever, poached fish, cooked brown rice with some seaweed type seasonings and cooked vegetables. That's the macrobiotic diet. And I think the evidence is just as good that that diet enhances immune function as well as an all raw diet. If you catch a fish, you eat it right away, it's the best way to do it. If you put a fish in the freezer, uh, you can preserve it, but it will still oxidize. It'll still slowly oxidize, even in the, fr in the freezer.